Okay guys, we got a troubleshooting video for you uh, coming up. This is the computer I just recently built, uh, I think it was January or somewhere around there, uh, for my friend Chris. And he, over the last couple days, has been having really sporadic, really odd, no post problems after updating BIOS. Let's just hope Asus hasn't struck again. With its updated design offering support for large GPUs, the all new H1 from NZXT brings big performance to small form factor gaming. The new H1 features larger ventilation for improved cooling and a new exhaust fan to increase air exchange efficiency, helping it to keep even the most demanding components cool. Taking the guesswork out of parts compatibility, the new H1 features a pre-installed fan controller, 750 watt power supply, Gen 4 PCIe riser cable, integrated AIO cooler, and pre-routed cables. To see the full list of features of the all new H1 from NZXT, Follow the link in the description below. Okay, so um, this is another one of those troubleshooting videos, like I said, where we're just gonna kind of take you guys along for the ride for some of the methodology on how we're gonna approach this. So to fill you guys in on what he's already tried, it wasn't one of those, hey, Jay, my career isn't turning on, it's a to you. No, he, he tried a lot of troubleshooting steps. He's not uh, like a beginner noob at setting up computers. He is capable of, you know, doing some troubleshooting steps. So things he's already tried, removing uh, all but one stick of RAM, cleared CMOS, um, tried different uh, monitor cables, unplugged his peripherals. <laughs> Let me back up a little bit here. So after, my, one of my first questions to him was, okay, you updated the BIOS. Did you ever get a post after the, the update to the BIOS? He said, yes. He got, you know, when you update the BIOS, you end up landing on a like press F1 to continue because of, you know, checksum error or whatever that's gonna happen after a new BIOS. Or now they don't call it checksum error. Basically it's like settings have changed, press F1 to enter setup. So he did that and it worked. <clears throat> he also did a um, restore factory defaults. So one of the reasons why he was doing the updates and was in BIOS even you know, poking around is because he was trying to install Windows 11 and he was getting the error, even with the standalone Windows 11 installer, not the update built into Windows 10, that his system was not ready for Windows 11. So he had to go in and turn on Trusted Platform Module 2.0 and Secure Boot. Now he installed or turned on TPM 2.0 and still got the error and he found out that secure boot was not enabled. It was after he installed or turned on secure boot when at that point he no longer was able to get any sort of post until he decided to take an HDMI cable and plug it into his monitor and plug it into the motherboard. Cause remember this is an 11900K and 11900K has an internal GPU on the CPU die itself. He's able to get a video post or get a post and video with that. Specifically on the USB 2.0 header or not USB, but the uh, HDMI 2.0 header, but not the 2.1. So no display port output on either motherboard or GPU, no HDMI on the GPU showing, but HDMI working on the motherboard. That's where we are. I have not tried to post this yet. For the love of God, don't let this post right now, because if it does, even though this is his monitor and his tower, because I want to create the setup here, with, if there's an issue with the monitor, I don't want to use ours and be like, well, you know, it's everything's fine. It could be a monitor issue. Please don't post because I need to be able to figure this out. This is going to be like the auto mechanic issue. Like my car is doing the thing and it stopped doing it when I got to the mechanic. It doesn't do the mechanic and then it does it again on the way home or he gets home and it doesn't post. There's a lot of things that could cause a system to hang. And that's why he went through the unplugging all the USB plugs. You know what? I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I had a peripheral once that I think it was a Corsair uh, Cooler Master Mouse actually, that if it was plugged in, my system would sit there for like 40 seconds before it moved past it. It thought that the mouse was like a bootable drive. It was like, hey, you got something on there we can load? Hello? And the mouse is just like, because it's a mouse, right? So there's A9. Okay, you mentioned A9 is where we get stuck, right? All right. So we've got a green light. Green light, although sounds like good, is a good thing, is not. We want white light. So green is just what it's most recently like stuck on, if that makes sense. Red would be just a straight up fault. Green means it's currently checking that particular component and we want it to turn white. That's when it actually clears and, and gets past its post. Does the button respond? Yes, it does. Okay, so that's a good sign. I can't read it. My old eyes now are too old for this shit. The next thing I wanna try, cause I know he did it, is I'm just gonna do display port into motherboard. Okay, it's testing memory. Look, display port. So the cable's fine. 
Let you guys to the BIOS, okay. Primary display is set to CPU graphics. See how we have auto CPU graphics, PEG and PCIe? So we want auto technically. Now with it plugged into the GPU, we're stuck on A9. So here's our test. Unplug it from here, plug it back into the motherboard because it's on auto, right? And let's see if we get a video signal. This is also one of the nice things about Intel CPUs. Yeah, see it's working. Having integrated graphics is you can't do this on AMD. You'd have to have a second graphics card to test this. Unless you have a G. <laughs> True. G see, it went back to CPU graphics. I set that to auto and it went back to CPU graphics. Okay, so I'm gonna restart now. Primary graphics is now set to PEG. And then swap this. If it does it again and I go back in and it says CPU graphics again, the next thing I wanna do is roll back the driver one version. There's USB, we have no video. 98 is memory. A2, A9. Okay, so looking up code A9, it says once the motherboard completes all power on self tests, the LCD display will settle with a steady A9 readout. Code A9 signifies the start of setup. So that means we're sitting there at the BIOS. Before I resort to changing the graphics card, which is face it, this would not be the first time a 30 series graphics card has failed. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's kind of commonplace. Fortunately, it's an EVGA card. They will stand by this product and replace it. But I want to roll back one version because he had no problems at all until he did the BIOS update. And this is not the first time we've seen settings in BIOS screw up. Because right now, I bet you right now, if I boot it again, it's going to say CPU and not be on auto and not be on PEG. So one of two things could be happening here. It could be just not saving the setting like it's supposed to, or it's going, if the graphics card did somehow die in a, in a manner of which it's not communicating with the PCI Express, it could just be defaulting back to, C, to CPU because it's like, bro, there's no, there's no graphics card installed. The BIOS should allow you to force it to a setting that has nothing there and then just not post. That's the way it should work. So if I go back to advanced and I go to system agent, CPU graphics. All right, we are currently on version 1301. I'm gonna go right now, download a BIOS that is a previous version to this and see if we get any different behavior. Anyone that's updated an ASUS BIOS knows it does multiple restarts. It does the main BIOS first and then it will do like the ME, which is the management engine next and then it will do like Aura after that. There's a few restarts and some of those restarts don't give you an image right away. And it can make you think like it, it hung and you can turn it off and interrupt it. So we were, I, I asked him, I said, can you remember if it did multiple restarts? And, um, you know, he was like, uh, honestly, I don't remember. He's like, I could have interrupted it. I don't blame him for that because I've myself been like, why isn't it posting? Oh yeah, it's doing ME flash. And, and that pops up like way late in the post process. And I'll show you guys too what that second post looks like when it's not done flashing yet. If he did interrupt it, then he would actually be very lucky that uh, it didn't brick anything. Where's version again? Oh, yeah, right there. So we're in 1202. Perfect. Graphics. Okay, set to CPU graphics. I'm gonna try PEG or PEG and uh, PETG. We'll go PEG again. So. All right. <clears throat> now we're moving on to the next troubleshooting step which is graphics, and that's terrible news if that's the case. One other thing I didn't do before I unplugged this or took it out, but I did verify with him, is that has he tried other DisplayPort uh, ports on here? And he said yes. So if this posts now with the 3050 in here, the next thing I'll need to do is take that card, put it in an own good system, and see if the problem, like if it follows the card. If so, then that's bad news, but also, the good news is the fact that I will be able to get him a replacement card. It's just, it just sucks, you know? The other possibility here is that it's the motherboard. The motherboard for some reason is no longer, oh yeah, there, there it goes. Blue light. That's not looking too promising. All right, so the 3080 Ti is on our test bench. Known good platform for obvious reasons is a test bench and we just use it for testing. So, What? 
We are in uncharted territory. This is good and bad. <laughs> GP would have been a lot easier to replace on the motherboard if needed. <laughs> All right, so we're throwing our 3090 Ti in here because we, again, know that it works because we just tested it a whole bunch. 3080 Ti has LEDs that will light up if one of these power cables isn't working. My first thought was like, maybe one of the PCI Express power cables is loose or something and it's not giving power to the GPU. And, but, and maybe the one I plugged in here. I'm just gonna put the 3080 Ti back in there. No, still stuck on A9 with 3080 Ti. 3050 works, 3090 Ti works, 3080 Ti doesn't work, 3080 Ti works on our test bench. <laughs> so, all right, we have got a 3080 Ti Tough installed right now. And I'm curious as if this will boot. If it is, then there's some weird conflict between the VBIOS and the EVGA card and this motherboard. Because we know the card works. The card worked just fine in our test bench. So we are now in a very weird, the screen just triggered. So it sensed something. Let's see, I have a feeling this is gonna work just fine. <laughs> really? Does it just hate 3080 Ti's specifically? How? 3090 Ti booted, 3050 booted. What the actual f this is This is why we make these videos because this is the kind of frustration, you know, a standard user would just be like, ah, what's happening, you know? Especially when it worked from one boot to the next. It's like the motherboard just forgot what a 3080 Ti was. Well, I fixed it. So, story time. To troubleshoot this, I had, I had to be very diligent. What did you do last? Like, what was the last known working config? And it was when he updated the BIOS. I have a theory on this. 1301 potentially somehow created an update in a deeper portion of the BIOS that handles display ID, which basically says, okay, motherboard. Motherboard goes, okay, graphics card, you're up. The graphics card says, okay, send a signal. I'm using, H I sense an HDMI to cable. Let's send a, cable, like a, a signal down the HDMI or display port. And then monitor says, oh, incoming. And then it turns on. That's auto on and auto display switching and all that sort of stuff. I found a post from NVIDIA on the NVIDIA website, um, like in their forums, deep in their forums, that specifically talked about a display ID UEFI update for this graphics card and the 3060. Now that goes back to October. And it's like, what, what the heck? This card has been working since October. Well, until they updated the BIOS. So this is a very similar problem to when we were showing you how we thought we had a bad graphics card and ended up being um, like, we just switched the card out to a 20 series and it would boot, right? You guys specifically even told me like, guys, Jay, there's UEFI updates that will handle this sort of thing. But to have a card working in a system to suddenly stop working means what triggered the UEFI update for the vBIOS ne to be necessary or the, the UEFI right, firmware was forced obsolete by the graphic or the motherboard update, which is odd because I've never had that happen. I've never had a motherboard update make a vBIOS slash UEFI and a graphics card no longer work. Now we're fortunate here that we had extra hardware Right, and then the other, the other clue was the fact that the tough wouldn't boot. So we then no longer were able to, like we, we, we expanded beyond this card with the same tier card, which started making me think there's something specifically with the 3080 Ti UEFI BIOS. Because remember, the NVIDIA UEFI BIOS for the 3080 Ti is the same on every single one. That is the root, like base layer of the firmware which the manufacturer V BIOS is put on top of to tell, you know, boost clocks, fan speeds, all that sort of stuff. So this is why these videos are important because all intents and purposes led me to believe the card was bad until I tried it with a 3050, right? Well, the, trying it with a 3050 is what told me the card's probably bad. Tried a 3090 Ti. Okay, the card's definitely bad because it's working. Put that card in the test bench and it works, goes, wait a minute. Why is only that tier card not working? 3080 Ti from Asus going in there, same thing, didn't work. 
the oddness here and why we show you guys this stuff is the fact that the motherboard update is what caused this. So I feel, I firmly believe because the BIOS or the BIOS that was on the motherboard was so old that updating it moved the display ID portion of the handoff to the video, uh, video card past the compatibility of whatever the initial launch 3080 Ti UEFI BIOS was or firmware was. So we essentially took compatibility of the motherboard and scooted it beyond where we were. I have other graphics cards and other systems I can test with. Most of you do not. So this could have led to a RMA of a card that's not bad. All it took was plugging this in my test bench, going to the NVIDIA website, downloading the display ID updater, popping in here and it works. The last thing we need to do right now is I need to just double check that display port is working because that was HDMI. And if display port's working, then fortunately for him, we are up and running, and then he can go back to trying to get Windows 11 installed if he still wants to do that. And wanting Windows 11 is what started all of this. <laughs> Can't blame him. I mean, I'm running Windows 11 myself because I need the long-term user report for personal reasons and obviously telling you guys whether or not you should do it. Yep, there it is. So I have now spent four hours, no, three hours on this. No, two hours, two and a half hours time on what actually took 25 seconds. <laughs> I guarantee someone watching this video right now just had an aha moment. And I promise this video has just helped someone like have a better day because maybe their stuff that they thought was broken is now working. So this also could lead people to thinking the BIOS update in the motherboard broke the motherboard, but it, motherboard's fine. It's the graphics that needs to be updated. Thanks for watching guys. Hope these videos have helped you. If you know someone whose graphics card suddenly is giving a black screen after doing updates, take the card out, put it in another system that's working, see if it boots. If it does, download the NVIDIA Display ID Updater and you'll be up and running. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.